One of the core features of CSS is the cascade, cascading style sheets. And what that means is that multiple style sheets can all style the same page. And the cascade is a set of rules and a process for determining which styles apply whenever there's a conflict. So we're going to get styles from different places. There's going to be conflicts between them potentially. And then the cascade is going to resolve those conflicts and determine the final styling of the page. And I wanted to show you how to inspect the cascade using the Firefox developer tools. Um, so we're going to do that here. We're going to open DevTools. And by default, uh, we have the HTML in a panel up top. We can see the DOM structure that's created by our HTML. There's an H1, main, and a couple sections. Uh, and then down below, we have the rules panel. And here's where we start to see how the cascade is working. The cascade works by giving every property and every selector a weight. And that weight is a combination of what we call specificity, uh, which is what we often talk about, uh, selector specificity. Um, and then also source order plays into the weight. And what we see here is a number of selector blocks and then properties and values applied to those blocks. And the very first one here, this says element, and I can actually click that. It will highlight the element that it's referring to. In this case, the main element. I can also go up here. I want to look at this H2, which has an inline style. This style is set in the HTML itself. And here we can see it shows up in the element styles. And if I added another style here, background green, uh, that would also be applied to the inline style. So that's always going to be first because inline styles tend to take priority over any other style that's applied. After that element block, we get selector blocks. Uh, and these are sorted by the weight of the selector. Weight is a combination of specificity, uh, how specific is this selector, and also source order. So a selector that comes later in the source code will appear higher up in this list. So here we can see these are all the styles being applied to the H2 in order of their weight, uh, which is a combination of, here you can see the selectors are the same, um, but they're coming from different files uh, that are loaded in a different order. Uh, and so they stack up in different ways. And if there's a conflict between them, here we can see a conflict, font weight normal, font weight bold. Uh, we can see that the one higher up on the list is overriding the one lower on the list. And so that one gets crossed off and grayed out. Uh, and that's going to be true sort of generally. We can see that also here on the section element. Uh, where we have a class uh, that's giving it a dotted outline of the current color. Um, but then on this ID, ID of declared, which is that top block, uh, we're overriding the outline style and setting it to dash. So again, here we can see uh, the higher specificity block is up top, uh, sets this to dashed, and then that changes what we see down below. Um, where now outline style of dotted gets crossed out in the block below, um, which is a class, and classes have lower specificity than IDs. And then third on that list, so we've got ID, class, and then the type here, type of section, and then a universal selector, which has a specificity of zero. So in this area, we're going to see the selectors that specifically select the element we're looking at. And those are going to be sorted by their specificity and order, their weight. And inside of those, we're going to see the properties and values that they apply uh, and how they override each other when there's conflicts. If we scroll down a little bit farther, we can also see inherited styles. Uh, so here we're jumping all the way to the HTML element where I've set a number of custom properties and then I also have font family, font size, and line height. And those are all inheriting on my sections. If I apply this font style on main and go back to my rules for the section, I can see that main shows up above the HTML. So main font style italic appears above the HTML font styles. And that's because for inherited values, which we show on the list after the specified values, these inherited values are going to be in the order of distance 
uh, how far is this ancestor element where we apply the style, how far away is it from the element that we're looking at? So if we're looking at this list or this section, the main element is a few steps out and the HTML element is a few more steps out. Uh, so when we're talking about inherited styles, they're gonna be listed in that order of distance. And if we added here a line height of one, uh, we can see that change and we can also see down below that's overriding the line height that comes from the HTML element. So that's a good start for seeing how the cascade works here. Uh, if we want to see also the browser styles that are being applied, the user agent style sheets being applied, we can go to settings, scroll down to inspector and check this show browser styles. Now when we look in the inspector, we'll see not only the styles that I've set, but also these user agent styles, these styles that come from the browser. So if we want to better look at the cascade, we can turn those on and we can see style sheets coming from uh, both ourselves and from the browser. There's a few other things here we can do. We can turn on uh, different states, hover, active, focus, etc. Um, and we can actually add classes to an element. So we could give this an additional uh, special class um, and then we'd be able to provide styles on that. Uh, we can turn classes on and off here uh, and see how that changes our styles. We can also add a new rule here, give it any selector we want and start to apply properties and values in there and we can see those take place. Uh, and if we go back here again, we can toggle that on and off uh, and see it all happen. We can also look at the computed tab uh, and here we'll see just the properties that are being applied. And for each property, we can look at where it came from, uh, when it was set, and we can see the entire list of style sheets that have set that property and what they set it to. Uh, and again, these are uh, in the order of the weight of that style. And in this HTML.CSS refers to the browser styles. Now, I don't have browser styles checked here. We're only seeing it because I've also set it. If we turn on the browser styles here, we see every single property that's being applied to the page. And that includes both the properties that are coming from the browser default styles, as well as the values that are coming from the specification defaults themselves. So I hope that's useful as you're inspecting and working on styles in the browser in Firefox. Uh, you can see the weight of things, the specificity of things and the order in which they override each other. Have fun.